Rocket Ethereal here. My goal is to get good at Rogue Legacy or die trying. Rogue Legacy is a heavily Castlevania inspired 2D roguelike, as if the name didn't tip you off to that, in which the castle which composes the levels of combat will shift and change and randomize after every life. But there's more than one quirk to Rogue Legacy, as it's going to be immediately apparent. This is just the starting area where all of the vendors that I have unlocked are, and I can talk to these vendors, and each of them will offer me different upgrades. The blacksmith will change my equipment, so he'll just give me upgrades or equipment that specializes in different statistics. You'll notice there were a lot of question marks there because I have to discover the recipes for those before the blacksmith will actually make them for me. The enchantress is the vendor through which I can attach special abilities such as extra jumping or flight or dashing or other things to my pieces of gear. So I can ultimately have five changed pieces of gear and five enchants, one enchant for each piece of gear. Finally, we've got the architect, and the architect offers you uh, the same castle loadout that you had last time. So the castle, the, the castle layout doesn't randomize but you only get 60% of all the gold that you earn on your run through the castle this time. Now, every time you run up this ramp, you will be greeted by Sharon, and this dickhead will take all of your money and start you off at zero gold every time you start a new run. Now, there are upgrades, which I will show you later, which you can actually get to mitigate the amount of gold that Sharon takes away. Sharon, Sharon. It starts with a CH, so I'm not necessarily sure. The only things that remain consistent about the castle are this. This entry room will always be here, it will always look exactly the same. And this map here never changes. It's not actually representative of the room by room layout, but rather it serves two purposes. One is to is just to tell me that the forest is always going to be to the right of the castle, the tower, or the Maya, as it's called, will always be at the top, and the dungeon will always be at the bottom. The squares next to their names indicate the difficulty, so ideally the progression is castle, forest, tower, dungeon. Now, <laughs> if you've played a Castlevania game before, you're going to start recognizing some of the similarities right here. Uh, everything from the enemy design to the movements and the, the combat in general is very much... Uh, it, it takes a lot of pages out of Castlevania's book. Right down to the fact that I can only have one active spell. Although in this case that spell is different depending on the character I choose when I start a run. I'll, I'll get into that after I experience my first death here, which will be inevitable. This game is very difficult. I have actually beaten it before, but I am doing this series because I did not really touch it on New Game Plus, and New Game Plus is very difficult. I thought that might make for a good challenge for a series. So I, I am going into this with some prior knowledge. I have a pretty good idea of how the game works. I have actually fought and beaten all of the, the main bosses. And I'm familiar with all of the different hero classes and some of the nuances of how the game plays. So, not quite blind. You'll notice I have this really interesting move where I can sort of swing my sword down and do a pogo jump with it if I strike either one of these pogo platforms like this, or if I hit an enemy. Uh, there, there are a lot of enemies I can actually just use the pogo attack on if they're directly beneath me, and I can, if, if my timing is good, I can use that to damage them without actually, actually risking taking any damage myself. Okay, so what we've got here, you can see in the upper right hand corner there's a fairy chest objective. This is a fairy chest room. And the fairy chest room always has some sort of weird condition that you have to fulfill in order to unlock the chest, which will have a, a permanent item unlocked for you. Uh, I, I think that may either be a, an armor recipe or an enchantress recipe. In this case, I would have to destroy all of these enemies, but as you can see, they're kind of out of reach, so this is obviously necessitating that I have some spell or ability that I do not currently have, and that is fairly common. You're kind of just gambling every time you start a new character that, 
<laughs> whatever uh, quirks your character has are going to help you out. Whatever, whatever the spell is that is going to be effective for the, the special rooms that you're going to encounter. Because like I said, the castle layout changes every time. So you don't know what obstacles you're going to come across. At least, not how they're going to be arranged in the grand scheme of things. There aren't all that many different layouts of rooms. You know, this, this is not Binding of Isaac. The rooms are much larger than Binding of Isaac, so... There haven't been as many different possibilities for how an individual room is laid out as in a game where the fighting area is so much smaller. In other words, you're going to get familiar with all the different room layouts fairly quickly. You'll stop running really into surprises within a few hours of having played the game. So when you die, it will give you a, a little death message. It'll show you a tally of all of the enemies that you've destroyed this run. Kind of just gives you a, a, a decent idea of how well you've performed skill-wise. But the skill-wise part doesn't matter. What matters is how much gold you got in that run. But before I'm able to, to use that gold and show you the upgrade screen, I have to choose my heir. So it's showing you uh, to the left is the character that just died. The story here is that I'm playing as a long bloodline of warriors, one after another going into this castle and trying to beat whatever the, the big bad guy is. It's kind of a mystery uh, in terms of the lore. So you can see here, there's a few interesting things in the info box for each hero. The first thing is always going to be the class, and the class is going to determine most of the significant aspects of the hero you're playing. And there's not much I can really add to the basic descriptions here. When when the description for the Assassin class says a risky hero, low stats, but can land devastating critical strikes, that that's exactly what it is. It's, it's exactly what it says on the tin. I like to play the miners a lot, uh, especially when I'm starting out the game, because there are so many permanent upgrades that you can buy that gold is more of an investment. You're not really playing to win, when you start out, in fact, you'll see if I come across a boss door, I'm just going to skip it because I would rather keep going through the level and trying to find more gold than trying to progress through the story until I've gotten more powerful. The spell, there's always going to be a spell, and there's just a, a very small set of spells that these are randomized from. You know, there's there's the dagger, there is the, uh, the axe, which you saw me throwing, with that last hero a couple times. They've actually updated this game since I last beat it, so I don't actually know uh, how Quantum Translocator exactly works. That's new. There's a, there's a few new features that they've added. Oh, and then the traits. The traits are one of the, one of the stranger quirks about Rogue Legacy. A, a character might not have any traits, such as Sir Hero here. But, as you can see in Sir McGlattery II's info box, he has Dextrocardia and Alectorophobia. <laughs> uh, a lot of these traits are either uh, genetic defects, like colorblindness or ADHD, or they are irrational fears. So, in, in this case, apparently chickens freak me out. Now, some of these traits might not affect the game at all. Some of them might just be amusing. You know, gay is a trait that you can see, and it just it just has a description that says you like the men or the ladies, depending on what the gender of your hero is. But it doesn't actually affect the gameplay whatsoever. So now that I've chosen my heir, which is going to be my next character for this run, we're at the upgrades screen. And you can kind of tell just by looking at it that as I get more upgrades and more in different kinds of upgrades, I will start to build out this upgrade castle and it kind of just unlocks new upgrades for use. But I'm blind, so I, I don't actually see what upgrades are hiding behind the other upgrades. I'm just guessing that as I start unlocking these upgrades that I haven't invested any gold in whatsoever, that there's going to be more for me to unlock. And there is. There is quite a bit. I, I've only unlocked about half of all of the types of upgrades I can obtain. Most of this is basic stuff. Uh, some of them, like the smithy upgrade here, this just unlocked the vendor for me. Some of them unlock different classes or upgrade classes in other classes. So the basic kind of um, 
tank hero was the knight. And when I got this upgrade, I turned all knights into paladins moving forward forever. And paladins get a, a shield that they can use to block all incoming damage, as you can see there in the description. Then there are the stat increases. So I can increase my carry capacity, which will allow me to equip heavier equipment later on. My health, my mana, my spell damage, and my regular damage. There's also some, some other things I just haven't gotten to actually buying them yet, because they, they take quite a bit of gold here. Uh, I will be getting gold gain up as soon as I can afford it, but that's just, that's just not happening quite yet. So here I am, back in the uh, in the intro area, and I'm going to give the greedy. No, I'm not. I'm not going to give Sharon all my money yet because I actually have enough to buy something. I am definitely going to buy the sword because that's just a straight 33% damage boost. That is a good investment to start off with. All right, now you can have my pocket change, little bastard. Take two. Like I said, this is this is the room that never changes. It's always going to look the same. And then, voila! Uh, I was not in this room before. Oh, what is this? I found this this dimmed area of the floor. A dimmed surface means that you can walk through it if you are of the correct size. However, ah, there's more to drop through. There we go. Look at how sneaky that is. Ah, uh, ha 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 ha! That's a good start. Now, if, if you are observant, and I can't guarantee this, but there may be other dimmed spots in the walls, floors, and ceilings in some of the other rooms on this run, if you see some that appear smaller than my hero, that's because I would have to have a hero with the dwarfism trait, because dwarfism uh, gives your hero a smaller size, which also means that they have a smaller hitbox and a smaller attack range but it also lets them pass through those, those smaller areas and get to some other secrets that any other hero would not be able to get to. There is a random chance that you will come across a jukebox room, and the jukebox room will just let you change the song that's playing in the background. It's just a fun little feature. It doesn't really serve any other purpose at all. Now, I said this game was a lot like Castlevania, and another way in which it is, is the enemy design. I mentioned that specifically. The enemies are all quite simple, and really, there's no surprises, except when you see an enemy for the first or second time. All the enemy patterns are quite simple, and it's really just a matter of learning what you need to do in order to overcome their patterns. Similar to a game like Mario, Rogue Legacy gives you all the tools you need to succeed right off the bat. Technically, I have enough to beat the game if I'm a god at this game, but I'm not a god, which is why I need the upgrades. But this, this basic attack and whatever magic spell my character comes with is technically enough to win. Oh, that was good. That was very good. Let's kill the skelly. I love this song. There are some nuances that you have to memorize about the uh, the different enemies. For example, the eyeballs can shoot their projectiles through hard walls, and the warlocks, which you've seen a lot of them, they're the little floating guys that fight fireballs and ice shards. There is stone. However, all projectiles go through soft platforms. Any platform that I can fall or walk through, basically. Okay, I'm I'm probably going to fail at this, but I'm going to, to try to pogo one of these guys to death because they're in a really bad spot. Hey, that, that actually worked. Wow, that was good. Which is great because I'm almost dead. Oh my gosh, he attacked faster than I thought he was going to, but that's not because his attack rate is variable, rather just I was kind of negligent about how fast he was going to attack. Uh, my choices are Archmage and Assassin. 
So if I pick this one though, uh, she has gigantism, which means that my hitbox and attack range are larger. I haven't actually seen Quantum Translate Translocator before, like I said, so I'm, I'm going to get that a shot. See if this isn't interesting at all. I only have 800 gold, so that's not quite enough to get that gold increase. I can get a crit chance increase, or I can get Haggle, which will make Sharon a bit less of a pain in the ass. But I think I'm going to do that. It's always a nice investment. Just means that I have to actually get less gold on this run in order to get a nice upgrade after this death. Okay, let's see what this does. Oh, okay. So it will just return me to the point that I was standing in before. So if there's a rough room I run into, I can just use that at the start of the room as kind of a, a safety measure. If things start to get hairy, then I can just teleport back to that. The downside of having a larger hitbox is uh, already showing its ugly head. It's much more difficult to evade projectiles and attacks in general. On the other hand, it's super easy to hit things that appear out of reach otherwise. No skelly. That's skelly. Ah, uh, the good old move slowly with lethal projectiles. Oh man, that's just dirty. Okay, see, that's one of the reasons this game is hard. The enemy spawning system just doesn't really care. Sometimes it'll do evil things to you like that. Ah! Look at that. Kill him through the wall. That's nice. This is a teleporter room, so these are scattered throughout the castle, usually either at boss rooms or at the edges of zones. So I know that this is an edge of zone room, I know that when I go up here it's going to be the Maya. Yeah, different zone, and I took 50 damage for showing that to you. That kind of sucked. That's because that, that's the third part of zone, but I can use the teleporter to return to any other room with the teleporter. cleared this out for sure, but it's a faster way to get back here. Okay. I'm not a fan of this layout. Wait. Oh, man. Okay, good. Good, that was good. Chests, I think, I think chests are guaranteed to have at least 100 gold in them. I'm not, oh my gosh, I'm not totally sure about that. Freaking rude. Oh, did you hear that? If I fall from a great height with gigantism, listen to that. <laughs> it's the little things. Oh! Yep. Uh, another way in which it's similar to Castlevania. Every time you die, it is your fault. Just because the design can be dirty doesn't necessarily mean that you're not to blame when you screw up and take damage. Alright, I've got a couple miners I can use here, so I'm just going to take this one, because she's little. Um, let's go for a Christian's up upgrade, which took almost everything I had. And apparently it grew this little tree that's to the left of these icons. Oh, she sees the world in sepia. I didn't actually look at her traits, so I can't remember what this is called. But this should give you a pretty good idea of how Rogue Legacy actually plays. Now, <laughs> I didn't even get to a room with a boss door, which tells you how difficult this, this is. You know, I made three attempts at getting through as much of the castle as possible, and I, I just didn't make all that much progress. The game is really expecting you 
to gather a lot of gold, get a lot of upgrades, get some decent equipment, put good enchants on that equipment, and then you'll you'll have enough stats and hopefully enough physical experience to make it further through. That said, it, it is a fairly time-consuming game to play. I have 18 hours on that, which means I, I spent about 17 hours on my first run-through, and then I played just a little bit in the new game plus, which makes it a, a pretty decent length game, but it also means that I should I should be expecting about 30 hours of this if I'm looking to do everything there is to do in New Game Plus, which I'm going to say is my ultimate goal in addition, of course, to getting all the Steam achievements. Still, this wasn't, uh, this wasn't too bad. The attempts that I showed you were decent. You know, they, they weren't fantastic, but they were enough to get me some upgrades, and that's the kind of gameplay that I'm hoping to execute as I continue on in my efforts to progress through this, beat it once, and be it a second time on the harder difficulty. Until next time, this is Rocket Ethereal, signing off.